um, about two years ago, the World Health Organization declared that the new coronavirus first that was first detected just a few weeks before in um, Wuhan, China, had become a global pandemic. The same day, the NBA suspended its um, its season, and this is also when actor Tom Hanks revealed that he and his wife Rita had tested positive for the corona. Um, Dr. Anthony Fauci of the National Institutes of Health um, of Health and, um, and Infectious Diseases had told a congressional panel that the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States would get significantly worse. Now, the number could go way up and be involved in many, many millions. And the, and the, the, the former squatter, Donald Trump, addressed the nation from the Oval Office that night and made this big announcement. And this is what Donald Trump had said, that um, he said that they would be... Um, that the White House would be suspending all air travel from Europe, except the United Kingdom, for the next month. The pol- that policy went into effect that particular Friday at midnight. Unfortunately, Trump hadn't conferred with European leaders, so they were caught unaware when he announced that he planned to halt all travel and imports from the continent. Almost as soon as he stopped speaking, aides were rushing to correct what he had said, explaining the ban would only apply to some European travelers and not the goods that would need to be delivered into the country. Um, Trump was um, was typically offensive, even in that formal setting, pe- um, peppering his Klan speech with comments such as this is the most aggressive and comprehensive effort to confront a foreign virus in modern history, and a large number of new clusters in the United States were seeded by travelers from the, from Europe, which became his stock in trade over the next year as he finally settled on China and the, on the China virus and started using the word and the racist term Kong flu as the xenophobic catchphrases for the cho- of choice. Now, throughout prior weeks, um, we've been following the story with growing interest, but it was just over. It was just a little over a month earlier that tr- that Trump had been acquitted, had been wrongfully acquitted in his first impeachment trial that he should have been actually impeached on and should have been and should have been guilty on. His chaotic squadency brought fresh outrages every day, so so the impact of COVID abroad hadn't truly hit home. And then on March 9th, two days before Trump held his one, his um held one his his most memorable in, in, inane COVID press avails when he visited the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta. He said he didn't want to allow some Americans stand, stranded on a cruise ship back in the country because he wanted to keep his numbers down. It was then that he reminded us how dangerous it was that a man with his temperament was in charge during such a serious crisis and recall this fucking asinine comment. He based this is what, um, you know, he said, you know, my uncle was a great person. He was at MIT. He taught at MIT for, I think, like a record of years. He was a great super genius, Dr. John Trump. Yeah, I doubt that. I like this stuff. I really get it. No, you don't. People are surprised. People are surprised to understand it. Um, no, people are surprised that you're a fucking idiot. Every one of these doctors said, how do you know so much about this? Um, Actually, I'm pretty sure they said, how, how little do you know? Basically, basically, Trump claims he has a natural ability, which he doesn't. But, but technically, the only natural ability he has is to be a fucking retard. Um, maybe I should have done that instead of running for squatter. And we were soon learning new phrases like social distancing and flatten and flatten the curve. And then we started wearing the makeshift masks everywhere, hoarding toilet paper and, and inexplicably sterilizing our canned goods, quarantining in our homes, watching the horror unfold on TV, seeing the hospitals and morgues overflowing, bodies being stored in refrigerator trucks, watching the case numbers grow exponentially was fucking bizarre and disorienting. But many Americans still had to go out into the world and do their fucking jobs. Healthcare workers, grocery store workers, delivery drivers, Cops and food providers were forced to expose themselves and their families to this deadly plague every day just to keep the country going, and many of them fucking lost their lives because of it. The unemployment rate went from 4.4% in March to 14.7% in April. The stock market fell out of bed repeatedly. Schools and businesses closed, and a whole lot of people started getting very sick and dying, and none of us had ever been um, had been through anything like this before. Now, we learned very quickly that the nation was unprepared for a public health emergency like this. The consolidation of hospitals in recent years resulting in fewer beds for more people left us extremely vulnerable to a mass illness that um, a mass illness event and our lack of supplies and inability to get the ones we had to where they were needed was cl- was a clear national disgrace and all of which was exacerbated by the sheer, the, by the sheer inep- in, ineptitude of um, the Trump administration's federal response. Now, seeing an, seeing an opportunity to be the center of attention, Trump took over the daily COVID briefings and turned them into a um, a macabre vaudeville act, pushing snake oils, um, snake oil cures, and battling with the media. But within weeks, he lost what little interest he had in properly dealing with the crisis as he grew concerned it was going to hurt his re-election chances. 
and from that point on, the pandemic became a political football, and the country has suffered for it ever since. On March 11th of 2020, the number of coronavirus cases in the U.S. had just crossed the 1,000 mark, and 29 Americans at that time had died. Today, the death toll is nearing 1 million, a number that was considered unthinkable two years ago. And although the numbers have come down rapidly from our most recent surge, we are still experiencing 1,500 deaths per day, and this is going to be our new fucking normal, basically. Now, for all the great sacrifices um, for the common good so many people have, fa have made in this crisis, COVID politics seeded during Trump's last year in office um, of squatting have shown Americans a side of our culture that isn't very fucking pretty. Our vaunted, our vaunted individualism and worship of personal freedom has an ugliness that revealed itself in this critical situation. The refusal to accept the need for collective action to protect everyone, especially the vulnerable, by millions of our fellow Americans has broken the already fragile social con contract and as a result, a cumul cumul a cu um, cumulative U.S. COVID-19 deaths per capita are the highest among all large, high-income um, countries. How embarrassing and how fucking tragic. Now, the latest surge has, re has receded and the mandates and requirements are all coming down, but it seems unlikely at this point that they will ever be reinstated even if a new variant comes our way, as many public health experts ex expect will happen. Um, the country is exhausted with covid and they're exhausted, and they just want, and they just want to fucking move on, which is understandable. But many Americans are also exhausted from the endless political battle that's surrounding this. Um, the COVID vaccines are a medical miracle of which the um, of which the right could have been could have taken ownership and led the way if they wanted to. Um, Trump was begging for credit as the man who single handedly invented them, which he didn't. But masks and other but masks and other mitigation efforts. Are, are are basically minor conveniences that might have that might have um been seen as acts of solidarity, um even patriotic duty. Instead, COVID nineteen became just another political weapon, with the republic with the Republican um with the Republicans literally choosing to die rather than join any and to join in any common effort with their political enemies. And hundreds of thousands of people have now died unnecessarily in the America's culture war, and it and it's far from being fucking over. So if you like the video. You can give the video a like and subscribe to my channel, RBW King, and you can also hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out. And if you want to support my work even further, you can donate to my Patreon link, which you can find on the, um, the About section for my YouTube channel. And I hope you guys enjoyed.